Well, I'm uh, Jose Y. Delisa Jr., also known as, as Butch. I teach uh, English here at the University of the Philippines, where I'm also serving as Vice President for Public Affairs. Uh, I write all kinds of things. Nagsusulat din ako sa Filipino. Ano? Um, tawag ang sarili ko minsan parang Swiss Army knife of, of writing because I write fiction, drama, non-fiction, um, occasional poetry, uh, scripts, biographies, histories. So, uh, I'm a professional writer. Uh, ang ikinabubuhay ko, pagsusulat ko. Ano, mula bata pa ako, ito na talaga yung ginagawa ko. Kaya, uh, uh, sig- siguro sa kadulod-duluhan natatawag ang sarili ko bilang uh, basically talaga, unang-una, uh, manunulat, pangalawa, uh, guro o profesor ng pagsusulat. Well, uh, the, 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 the excerpt I'll be reading comes from my first novel, which, uh, like many first novels, is semi-autobiographical, and, and so this deals with a, a part of my childhood uh, growing up and visiting my hometown of Alcantara in the province of Romblon. Of course, I've fictionalized some of that, but uh, I think that um, what I really want to do when I write is to uh, capture uh, everyday life and to find something uh, interesting and different about it. Like I often tell my students, for me, the challenge of, of writing is not necessarily in going to galaxies far, far away, but to uh, to discover the the extraordinary in the ordinary in, in the things around you and to find something wonderful and spectacular and also of course deeply troubling uh, in in the things we see today but often take for granted so so that's uh, that's been the burden of my of my writing, just looking around me and and finding interesting things. I think it's really the childhood portion that still uh, fascinates me. Again, I was born on a small island in in Romblon. Well, it's not that small, but as islands go, it's not really huge either. So I was born on a seaside village, and we moved from there to Manila when I was maybe about two or three years old. Binalikam ko yon nung mga nine years old ako. I spent a summer there. And and part of the novel's beginning is trying to recapture that the, the, that summer. And I think in every child's life, there there is that one golden summer that, that you don't quite forget because of the place and the people and it's something that stays with you for the rest of your life. And this was for me the summer of 1964, I think. Uh, I was there, I was 10 years old. And and I start the novel by by going back to that place, to those years, and, and all the magic that I associate with it. It's an island uh, full of enchanted places. Of, of mysteries, of, uh, of, of magic. Uh, the, the part of, of that novel that I very often return to for my readings, I'll be, I'll be reading a different portion tonight, but I talk about the time when I visited my grandfather's grave, which was an open, which was a raised tomb with a hole that you could look into, so I saw his skull, and, uh, and, and, and that I thought was a pretty memorable uh, instant. And so that's in the novel. And, uh, and 
coming face to face with my, with my grandfather. Uh, I never really saw him. He died a month, a couple of months after I was born. Uh, was I think uh, emblematic of of what the novel tries to do, which is really to bring us back to our to face our past. And there's a political sense to that because, of course, it's a novel about martial law, and today we're facing many of the same things that that I, as a teenager, faced during martial law. So we're going back to our roots, going back to our beginnings. Well, I think it, since it's a novel about growing up under martial law, it will give younger Filipinos an idea of what happened then. But even for those who went through martial law, uh, for people of my, of my age and time, I think it will remind us that no, no choices were ever easy. If you choose to be a rebel, then you commit yourself to a life of, of hardship and, and difficulty. Nothing will come easy to you. And it's also a novel of, of betrayals. It's a novel of finding out that you might not be the person you thought you were. So uh, it's something, I think, that should help people make their choices more intelligently and, and more responsibly. Uh, and, and that's something that I hope more young people would be able to do today. I come from a country without snow and without raspberries. Instead, we have pounding rain and coconuts. When the typhoons come, the coconuts fall in the rain of their own. I know, as a boy of ten, I spent the summer in my hometown of Kang Leong in the Visayan Islands. And I remember how early one morning I rose to the shriek of the wind in what I imagined to be a stampede of heavy-footed horses among the groves. It was the sound of many coconuts falling into the bush into the brush padded mud, full grown nuts torn loose from the treetops by slashing wind. At daybreak, I hurried to the groves with the other children, and we gathered up the coconuts, and we dragged, rolled, and kicked them over to the Bukayo maker's shack. She paid us five centavos for every coconut we salvaged from other people's farm lots. And we lingered while she grated the white flesh and steeped the cakes in a deep iron panful of simmering molasses. I remember that well, the exhalations of the wet earth and the overpowering sweetness of sugared coconut. Later that morning, I walked up to the seashore to see how large the waters had become, and they were large indeed and ugly flicking at the edges of Kang Leong in a dirty brown froth, throwing up blackened logs, palm fronds, pieces of rope, and strange triangles of colored plastic on the beachfront bordering the coastal road.